Thank you all for having me uh, and, and supporting this work. We're quite excited about. Uh, we're looking at uh, relationships of mitogenic signaling with loss of uh, BRCA1 and 2 in pancreatic cancer. Mitogenic signaling refers to signal transduction that emanates from growth factor receptors and, and thereby induces cells to divide. I'm coming from Boston. Uh, this is a, how does this work? Beth Israel Deaconess, our institution. Uh, this is a, a shot of downtown Boston. I have to say I was very excited when I was given the opportunity to come to LA in January. I fully expected it would look more like this at home now. Uh, this is last year, which was very snowy, but actually this winter's been quite mild. It, it doesn't look like this at all. Um, I open with uh, the same usual slide, similar to uh, what Dr. Kendall just shared with us in terms of the uh, statistics and the epidemiology of pancreatic cancer and the current standard of care treatments. And while I realize that this information is not new to this group and that these statistics haven't changed all that much in several decades, I, I do think it is uh, important information to highlight. It, it stresses the importance of the work that we're doing in research to uh, improve outcomes for our patients and, and really the urgent needs that they are facing. Pancreatic cancer, as you know, is the fourth leading cause of cancer death in the United States with an estimated incidence of just over 44,000 in 2011. By far the majority of patients present with advanced stage disease, only 15 to 20 percent are candidates for surgical resection. And despite recent advances in the treatment of this disease at all stages, um, the overall five-year survival uh, remains low, less than 5 percent. In terms of treatment for advanced pancreatic cancer, systemic chemotherapy remains our primary treatment modality with a, a focus on conventional cytotoxic agents. Gemcitabine has been the standard of care for at least uh, 15 years or so now. And um, uh, over the years, several gemcitabine-based combinations have shown promise in early phase disease, uh, excuse me, for early phase studies. But in later studies, uh, those promises haven't uh, resulted in the, the benefits that we'd hoped to see. Over the past couple of years, there's been a lot of excitement about the full furanox regimen, which uh, when compared to gemcitabine, did, re did result in improvements in overall survival, progression-free survival, and, and notable improvements in response rates and disease control rates. But given the high toxicity profile, the population for whom this is appropriate it is limited. In terms of targeted therapies, the small molecule inhibitor allotinib uh, is an EGFR inhibitor and is approved for use in this disease, but there's been uh, little enthusiasm in adopting this as a standard of care because of the relatively minimal clinical benefit seen. And a number of emerging uh, agents have been studied or uh, currently in either uh, preclinical or clinical studies, but as of yet, no druggable target has been identified that has uh, resulted in substantial uh, clinical benefit for, for patients with pancreatic cancer. And the bottom line from all this really is that uh, thus far no durable responses have been achieved in the treatment of advanced pancreatic cancer. I'm going to switch gears now a little bit to talk about the uh, BRCA. The role of BRCA mutations are well known in hereditary breast and ovarian cancers. This is a figure from a, a New England Journal 2008 article looking at the relative risk of breast cancer with various uh, germline mutations. Both BRCA1 and 2 are, are highly uh, penetrant mutations, and they confer uh, risks about 10 to 30 times that seen in the general population for development of breast cancer. When we think about uh, hereditary malignancies, we often think of this two-hit model whereby a patient will inherit one abnormal copy of the gene from either their mother or father, and then a second event occurs within the cell, whether that be a point mutation, a, a terminal deletion, a translocation, or a, a post-translational translational event, an epigenetic event. Something else happens which then causes the cell to transform and, and uh, become carcinogenic. BRCA1 and 2 are both large proteins, and their primary role is in um, DNA repair by homologous recombination. Phosphorylation of BRCA1 is important in recruiting additional enzymes necessary for DNA repair and uh, are important uh, in 
in uh, carcinogenesis. However, uh, hereditary BRCA mutations also increase the risk of other malignancies, including prostate cancer, melanoma, endometrial, and pancreatic cancer. Uh, the relative risk for BRCA2 is in the range of 3 to 5, such that patients with germline mutations in BRCA2 have about a 3 to 5 times the risk of developing pancreatic cancer as that seen in the general population. And for patients who harbor germline BRCA2 mutations, they have about a 7% lifetime risk of developing pancreatic cancer. For patients who develop uh, pancreatic cancer in the setting of a, a familial syndrome, about 15% of them will harbor BRCA2 mutations. For BRCA1, the, result, the relative risk is slightly less impressive, about 2.25. But when one looks at this, it's actually at the same range as the risk of developing breast cancer in patients with PALB2 mutations or the risk of developing colorectal cancer in patients with some mutations in the APC gene leading to familial adenomatous polyposis. That's clearly highlighting a role for, for both of these genes in uh, pancreatic cancer development. Several uh, <coughs> studies in the breast and ovarian cancer literature have also suggested that inactivity of, of BRCA1 and 2 may be seen in sporadic cancers as well. And given the role of BRCA1 and 2 in uh, DNA repair mechanisms, this may be an important driving force in cancer development. This is, this is old data here, but we see that uh, within the tumors, there's a reduction in BRCA1 expression, and in the adjacent normal tissue, BRCA1 expression remains intact. BRCA1 uh, may be reduced in as many as 90% of uh, invasive ductal carcinomas of the breast. Here, this is by uh, IHC. We see BRCA1 is intact in the normal breast and ovarian tissue, as well as in the low-grade DCIS and invasive lobular carcinomas, but BRCA1 expression is reduced in the invasive ductal carcinomas. And this is uh, Rubin's model from 2000. Uh, showing this uh, progression, this sequence of events that lead to pancreatic cancer development. They noted, obviously, KRAS mutations along with HER2 as early events, and then over time, this temporal sequence and acquisition of mutations uh, evolves through different stages until pancreatic carcinogenesis occurs. And here they highlighted mutations in BRCA2 as a later event in pancreatic cancer development. So this is, this is a busy slide. This is our model for how uh, BRCA1 may interact with mitogenic signaling to stimulate pancreatic cancer. I'll take some time to, to walk through this. Uh, tumor suppressor genes like BRCA1 and P53 serve multiple functions within the cell. On one hand, they provide negative feedback to uh, signal transduction via AKT, mTOR, and ERK that are important in cell proliferation, gene transcription, and by providing this negative feedback regulation, they ensure an orderly progression through mitosis, uh, cell cycle checkpoints, and, and DNA repair. At the same time, BRCA1 also provides negative feedback on mitogenic signaling via receptor tyrosine kinase like EGFR and IGFR, thereby blunting uh, this activity. When BRCA1 or P53 are lost, we see loss of this negative feedback on AKT and mTOR, thus uh, pushing cells through this, this hasty progression through mitosis and leading to increases in accumulation of mutations and genomic instability. At the same time, we lose negative feedback on mitogenic signaling, which pushes the cells into overdrive. This is data from a colleague of mine, Costas Luciatis, who's uh, working with Luke Cantley on an, an analogous concept, uh, also demonstrating that, that loss of P53, which here functioning as a, a guardian of the genome, cooperates with signal transduction, here activated RAS, to induce pancreatic cancer. And uh, loss of P53 alone in this model was not adequate to induce pancreatic cancer, but in combination with activation of RAS, this accelerated the uh, pancreatic cancer progression. He also showed that con the continuation of this process, of the continuation of the malignant process, was dependent on continued activation of RAS. They've also shown that 
Uh, loss of RAS is associated with decreases in ERK and AKT. And our group has shown that uh, suppression of BRCA1 in endothelial cells is associated with increases in EGFR expression. This was seen both in the uh, transcriptional and post-translational levels and uh, noted at the earliest stages of malignant transformation within these cells. Also, these cells were sensitive to EGFR inhibition. So these results show that uh, aberrant receptor tyrosine kinase signaling via EGFR or other mitogenic signaling uh, may be uh, dependent on and, in, and reliant on uh, loss of BRCA1 within these cells. The role of BRCA1 in sporadic cancer was also demonstrated by Beeger and colleagues in 2004. So uh, these researchers took a panel of 50 pancreatic cancer specimens and uh, stained with uh, immunohistochemical staining for BRCA1 and 2 and compared this to a population of normal pancreatic tissue and also tissue from chronic pancreatitis. And they found that in 50% of the pancreatic cancer specimens, there was decreased expression of uh, BRCA1. So in the first panel here, we see uh, an example of normal pancreatic tissue with intact BRCA1 staining. Uh, in panel B, this is an example of chronic pancreatitis, also with intact BRCA1. Panel C shows an example of uh, pancreatic adenocarcinoma that has intact BRCA1. And in contrast to panel D, which is an example of pancreatic adenocarcinoma that shows loss of BRCA1. And uh, similarly, they showed the, the decrease in BRCA1 by quantitative analysis. But what is, is very notable is this population of patients, this subpopulation of patients with pancreatic adenocarcinoma whose tumors demonstrate complete absence of BRCA1. They also looked at BRCA2. The results were somewhat less impressive. Uh, they noted uh, loss of BRCA2 expression by IHC in, in eight of the 50 specimens studied. Again, panel C here is an example of pancreatic adenocarcinoma with intact BRCA2, and panel D an example of, of adenocarcinoma with loss of BRCA2. Again, there was this subpopulation whose tumors exhibited complete absence of BRCA2. The loss of BRCA1 was also noted on the RNA level. And what I think is very interesting are the, the Kaplan-Meier survival curves. Here they compared survival in the population of patients whose tumors exhibited intact BRCA1 staining with those whose tumors lacked or had decreased BRCA1 staining. And they found that one year overall survival was 47% less in the patient population whose tumors demonstrated a lack of BRCA or decreased BRCA1 staining. There was not a significant difference among the populations uh, with regard to BRCA2. So uh, clearly these results uh, suggest a role for BRCA1 in pancreatic cancer development. The mechanisms for how BRCA1 may be decreased are, are not known within this disease. And, um, and also how BRCA1 expression may underscore responses to therapy or serve as a biomarker for responses to therapy is not known. Um, in vitro studies of pancreatic cancer that lack BRCA have shown that these tumors are more susceptible to um, uh, cross DNA cross-linking agents. And clinical studies have looked at uh, patients with pancreatic cancer that's developed in the setting of uh, hereditary BRCA mutations. And these patients' uh, disease does seem to be more responsive to platinum therapy, as one would expect. Uh, DNA repair proteins like BRCA1 and PARP uh, in our model exert negative feedback on these mitogenic signaling that uh, attenuates the mitogenic signaling and uh, regulating as such. Uh, we think that in tumors that lack BRCA1, this may suggest a role for, for PARP inhibition or, uh, or a biomarker or in combination with EGFR, IGFR inhibition within these cells. And indeed, this is uh, data from uh, the MD Anderson group who has looked at use of a PARP inhibitor in an orthotopic mouse model of pancreatic cancer. They studied the BSI compound in combination with oxaliplatin and showed that the combination was synergistic and resulting in decreases in tumor volume 
uh, as well as improvements in overall survival. So in the first few months of our project, we've been looking to validate the results from Beeger and colleagues to confirm that there indeed is this subpopulation of patients with pancreatic adenocarcinoma whose, um, whose tumors uh, exhibit a decrease in BRCA1. We're looking to understand the mechanisms of, of how BRCA1 may be uh, decreased, and then to look at associations with uh, mitogenic signaling mechanisms. We are poised to be successful for this. We have a, an active pancreatic cancer program. Um, we see about 150 patients per year, and uh, our surgeons are performing between 30 and 35 surgical resections per year, so giving us access to uh, tissue samples uh, to study this. And in terms of the other signaling parameter, mitogenic signaling parameters, we're looking at correlations with EGFR, PI3 kinase, AKT, uh, and PARP, and then ultimately hope that these efforts will translate into uh, clinical trials and, and benefit for our patients. So once again, this is my busy slide showing that lack of uh, BRCA1 is associated with uh, loss of this negative feedback regulation on AKT mTOR, thus resulting in this hasty progression through mitosis and increases in genomic instability, as well as loss of this negative feedback on mitogenic signaling here, pushing the cells uh, into overdrive. So we plan to study uh, 200 specimens in total. We're not quite there yet, so I can't present these results with any statistical confidence. But thus far, we're seeing decreases of BRCA1 in about a third of the tumors. Uh, and I hope that these uh, project OK here. Um, but interesting results. So this is an example of a tumor that shows decreased BRCA1 staining. And it is associated with uh, increases in EGFR. That's to be expected. EGFR is overexpressed in the majority of pancreatic adenocarcinomas. But this level of uh, expression was really quite intense. And uh, this loss of BRCA1 was also associated with loss of P10 within the tumors. In contrast, here we have an example of uh, BRCA1 staining that's more uh, heterogeneous. And again, we see intact EGFR staining within these tumors, but uh, perhaps slightly less uh, intensely so. And in the tumors where BRCA1 is uh, heterogeneous expression, we see intact P10 expression. Again, uh, similarly here, we see loss of BRCA1 associated with uh, loss of P10 and increased intensity in EGFR. And this is in contrast to an example where a tumor uh, exhibits uh, BRCA1 staining remains intact. And this is associated with intact and intense staining for P10, as well as intact staining for EGFR. So in conclusion, we are showing that uh, pancreatic ductal adenocarcinoma can be classified into BRCA1 intact versus BRCA1 low or negative tumors and that this may have prognostic significance for patients with pancreatic cancer. Also, that loss of BRCA1 may be associated with activation of mitogenic signaling via EGFR, RAS, ERK, PI3 kinase, and that this may have implications for response to therapy. I wanted to acknowledge uh, Gerberg Wolf, who's been my colleague and mentor on this project, and also Rob Nigerian is our colleague from pathology. Uh, also, our, our entire pancreatic uh, cancer team at Beth Israel Deaconess, uh, including colleagues from medical oncology, surgery, radonc, and gastroenterology. And then finally, of course, to thank the Hirschberg Foundation for supporting this work and, and all the work that you're doing. Thank you. Thank you.